on June 5, 1967, Israel carried out a preemptive strike on her surrounding neighbors. Two days into the now infamous Six Days of War, Israeli General Moshe Dayan ordered troops to enter and capture the old city of Jerusalem. After four days of heavy fighting across multiple battlefronts, Israel emerged victorious. The war appeared to be over. The Gaza Strip, the Sinai Peninsula, the biblical heartland of Judea and Samaria, and the coveted old city of Jerusalem were all now firmly under Israeli control. The fate of Israel's volatile northern border with Syria and the Golan Heights was yet to be determined. At 3 a.m. on June 9th, Syria gave in to pressure from Egypt and announced their acceptance of a ceasefire deal. General Dayan believed a ceasefire was also in Israel's best interest. Around dawn, he changed his mind. At 7 a.m., he ordered the IDF to ascend and secure the Golan Heights. The following day, the offensive was complete. When it is evening, you say it will be fair weather, for the sky is red. And in the morning, it will be stormy today, for the sky is red and threatening. You know how to interpret the appearance of the sky, but you cannot interpret the signs of the times. Jesus held his generation accountable for how they interacted with the prophetic signs of the times. I believe that we as a generation who are witnessing the fulfillment of prerequisite, preliminary, preconditioned prophecy right before our eyes, we need to understand that our generation is going to be held accountable for what we're witnessing in the same way that the Sadducees and the Pharisees were in Matthew 16 and Luke 19. Here in the Golan, in the shadow and foothills of Mount Hermon, the borders of Israel, Syria, Lebanon, and Jordan meet. The contested plateau spans about 1,800 square kilometers. Today, Israel controls 1,200 of them. The rest is held by an array of Islamic regimes, factions, and militias fighting for control of the future of the Middle East. Moses, David, Jesus, and Paul were personally familiar with this rugged countryside as they traversed its peaks and valleys. So too will foreign invaders be when they violate Israel's borders and begin the war to end all wars. There is something very powerful in not knowing the signs of the times. This is not a matter of education, of a theology degree. This is something that is normative for those who are disciples of Christ. He says that we would be hypocrites if we don't understand the signs of the times. Nobody would stand here today and look outside and go, I'm going, I'm going to put shorts and a t-shirt on and go to the beach because it's sunny. Everybody around me would look at me and go, you're delusional. It's foggy, it's freezing, it's rainy, it's cold outside. You can look outside and discern the weather because it's obvious. And Jesus said to the Pharisees in Matthew 16, you have the word. You don't have to live in delusion. It's clear, but you cannot come to the word of the Lord. Holy mysteries of Jacob's trouble, severity, the return of Jesus, the end of this age and the inauguration of the kingdom of the son of David. You cannot come to these 
holy things with an ego. You cannot come to it with pride. You are not master over the word. It, you are subjected to the word. Come to the word with prayer, humility, and fasting. Ask your father for wisdom and clarity and he will give it to you. But do not look at a gray sky and say it's sunny. In Matthew 24, when Jesus said, no one knows the day or the hour, he also said the word no seven times in Matthew 24 and 25. And all seven times that he mentioned it, he used the word no to command our knowing of the season. Now we won't know the day or the hour, but we are commanded to know the season. He said that in the same way that a fig tree gives off leaves, you know that summer is near in the same way. When you see all these things taking place, know that summer is near. Jesus lays the signs out for us. We are without excuse here. The signs are birth pangs, the signs are social pressures in the earth, and the signs are geopolitical realities that happen in the land of Israel, in the city of Jerusalem, that effect a global crisis and an international controversy that leads to the second coming of Jesus. The red sky in the evening would mean one thing, but the same sky at another point of time would mean another thing. Jesus says that if we are not part of this unfaithful generations, generation, if we are discern, discerning and uh, good disciples of the word, we should factor in the timing of the signs and we should consider them in their proper, proper context. The generation who witnesses these things will by no means pass away until all of these things take place. What are these things? It's the prophetic signs. In other words, when you see the gospel of the kingdom being proclaimed to all nations, when you see the abomination of desolation set up, you will see the fruition of all of these things.